Hi there, this is the Solitary Ronin from Solitary Ronin Films. Thank you for checking out this video and welcome to another top 10. And this top 10 is David Cronenberg, who is one of those filmmakers that people either like or don't like so much. Um, now this top 10, again, is just my opinion, um, my favourites. Obviously if you disagree or would prefer to see the other ones then let me know in the comments and leave a like if you enjoy this video. Now you may notice in this top 10 that there aren't too many of his films past the year 2000. Um, that's just my personal preference. Um, he does have some very good films um, in recent years such as History of Violence. Um, and Spider, which is a lovely little depressing film. Um, another point, sadly I only have 7 out of these 10 on Blu-ray and due to space I have um, reduced my DVDs just to discs um, apart from obviously things like Criterion and things like that, I've kept the boxes and John Sayles films and things. So please forgive me if you just see me holding up a disc. Um, I do hope to get all these films on Blu-ray at some point. So without further ado, let's start at number 10. And it's the one that's just a disc. And it's Existence. Now Existence is an interesting little film. It's about game design and then being lost in that world. Is it reality? Is it within a game? But for me this film actually works better as a metaphor as quite a lot of Cronenberg films do. And this is more a metaphor about the creative process. Um, there's a scene at the start where it's essentially a focus group and it's about ideas about whether this part worked and it kind of cuts back to these people sometimes during the film and it's, does this bit work? No, I thought that character wasn't quite right or there's a line about some a character's accent in the film, how that's not quite, um, not that good and that should be changed. So you kind of feel this is more Cronenberg almost letting out a little bit of frustration about the creative process and working with studios and trying to get his vision onto the screen, which we'll maybe talk about a little bit later with his earlier films. Um, but again, it's a nice film with Jude Law, Jennifer Jason Lee, Willem Dafoe, as a very strange mechanic. But again, I think it really works as a kind of criticism of the creative process um, and what it takes to get, in this case, a video game, but easily a film made as well. And you have to go through, jump through all these hoops and you have to listen to all these people that aren't necessarily as creative as you are. So that's number 10. Existence. This is number nine, and this is The Brood, which is, I'm probably going to make a film myself, but this might be his third film, possibly his fourth, um, and this stars Oliver Reed, and again it's Cronenberg almost creating a science and a language of science all by himself. It's about a man who loses his wife to a clinic run by Oliver Reed and again it's about the paranormal and it's about the power of the mind and apparently Cronenberg made this to make him feel better about his divorce. So it's about the pain of birth, the pain of separation, um, and it is a kind of creepy little film. 
again I'm not going to spoil things too much um, this has some really nice um, extras in it um, there's interviews with Art Hindle and Cindy Hines um, there's a discussion about um, Cronenberg's early days uh, there's an interview with the producer and um, other character actors it's a really nice wee film well it's not a really nice wee film but it's a really nice wee film and that's number 9 and that's The Brood number 8 is Shivers or They Came, with, they came From Within or The Parasite Murders and this is Cronenberg's first film. Again, this is kind of a similar synopsis to his second film, which is Rabid, which controversially didn't make the top ten. You can let me know about that in the comments. I just feel this is the kind of the better version, because they're two similar films as far as there's an outbreak of something that makes people do certain things and it's fairly apocalyptic. I just think Shivers kind of works better. There's a whole philosophy behind the creatures. Um, it starts with a really shocking scene, which obviously I'm not going to spoil. Um, this is the Arrow version. Sadly, the Arrow version of Rabid seems to have went out of print and disappeared which I should have really got when it was actually available. Um, I have ordered it like through HMV and then they've come back and said, oh, sorry, we can't actually get it. So if anybody knows where to get the Arrow Blu-ray of Rabid at a reasonable price, then please let me know. Um, again, with Arrow, this has got a ton of extras. Um, sadly, no Cronenberg uh, commentary, because his commentaries are fantastic. But this is kind of early, well, very early Cronenberg. And again, with his early films, there is some kind of budget restrictions. There's kind of acting restrictions at times in his early work. And you do get the feeling that he couldn't quite get his complete vision onto the screen. But I would say this is one of his better early ones. And that's Shivers, and that's at number eight. Number seven is one of these controversial ones, and that's Naked Lunch, which there is a Criterion Blu-ray, I do know that, and I haven't yet ordered it, but I shall get around to doing it. Um, I remember being at university, and the people I shared the flat with, we went to a video shop to rent a video, and I had wanted to see this, so I rented this. And we all sat down and watched it, and probably about three out of five people just walked out of the room about halfway through it. Um, I'm not really sure what they were expecting. I'm not really sure what I was expecting. I just knew it was Cronenberg. It is a strange one, but for some reason it kind of works. It's loosely based on William Burroughs' book, Naked Lunch, but it's not really. It's more about the state he was in when he wrote the book, Naked Lunch. So, again, it's fairly indescribable, and it probably, at some point, I'm going to do a top ten films of what did I just watch, and Naked Lunch is probably in that top ten, because it is a strange film. Um, probably the only two people that could have made it would be Cronenberg or Jodorowsky and it is worth seeing just to see it I mean Peter Weller gives a good performance um, Roy Schneider and Judy Davis and Ian Holm as well who's been in a couple of Cronenberg films again it's you need to really see it to describe it because it's it's a bit odd, but it's very disturbing, but also kind of cool and detached and wonderful. 
And number six, I apologise, is another DVD. And this is Crash, which is his most controversial film. Now, bizarrely, I saw this in the cinema on a double bill with Microcosmos, the wonderful little French film about insects. Um, And then I crossed the cinema screens and went in to see Crash. Now, there were a lot of people seeing Crash because they all thought, you know, they'd read about the controversy and they all thought they were going to go and see an erotic thriller or something, which obviously, being Cronenberg, it's not that. And they were disappointed and I believe a few people walked out. Because what Cronenberg does very cleverly in this, he gives you sex scene, crash, sex scene, crash, sex scene, crash, sex scene, crash. So you're kind of, you're disorientated in the first 20 minutes. And then he actually tells the story about disconnected people, a kind of whole community of disconnected people who get pleasure from essentially death it is a fantastic film it's a film that I'm not sure why it's not on Blu-ray, again I could be wrong please somebody tell me if I'm wrong but it's for me it's got Criterion Collection written all over it I don't know whether there's rights issues Um, this is Columbia TriStar so it's a fairly large label obviously it's not that popular a film but For me, Criterion or even Arrow, Crash is made for that label. Um, Yeah, if you think you're going to see an erotic thriller or you're going to get turned on by it, it's not that kind of film. It is a disturbing film, but it's also a very intelligent film. I mean, Cronenberg is not an exploiter. Cronenberg is one of the smartest people in the world, I would say, certainly in filmmaking, he's, and again, if you can find editions of Cronenberg films with commentaries, I highly recommend them, because he's such a smart guy, and he will, again, very much like John Sayles, Michael Mann, he will teach you things about how to actually make a film. So that's Crash, in at number six. Number five is everybody's favourite, and that's Scanners. Again, probably the most focused of Cronenberg's early work. Um, Michael Ironside, Patrick McGoon are kind of, not to put anybody else down, but they are kind of the first time he worked with kind of proper actors. I know that's disrespectful, I don't mean that, but um, everybody knows the story of Scanners, everybody knows the opening scene. Again, it just kind of took what then kind of became body horror, which Cronenberg has never really been a horror director, I would say. Um, His subject matter just happens to be in that kind of realm. But this was such an influential film as far as um, makeup and effects, when you consider how small the budget was. Um, It did spawn two sequels, possibly three sequels, and if you count the Scanner Cop films, then probably about six or seven sequels, but this is the best. Again, this is about science gone wrong, and the price you have to pay. Plus, it's one of those kind of classic Cronenberg endings. I mean, people who have criticised Cronenberg kind of say, well, he doesn't really know how to do an ending. Um I think I would disagree with that. I mean, really in life do you get closure, so why should you have complete closure in the films? Um, There's nothing wrong with filmmakers who ask more questions than give answers. Um, But most people will remember this for a certain body part exploding. So number five is Scanners. Number four is The Fly. Now, people might not have this as high, just because it's kind of Cronenberg's most commercial one, if you want to put it like that. And the story behind this was Cronenberg 
um, and Mel Brooks production company, bizarrely. That sounds like a strange combination. But Cronenberg was originally going to do Total Recall, which ended up obviously with Schwarzenegger and Paul Verhoeven and a huge budgeted film. And as soon as um, Schwarzenegger became attached, Cronenberg became detached and didn't really want to do it. I think that's the true story. That might be wrong. Again, correct me. Um, But Mel Brooks liked Cronenberg so much he wanted to give him another project. So The Fly came up, the remake of the 1958 film. Now Cronenberg then took the script and completely rewrote it. He only kept one line from the original 1958 script and answers in a postcard what that one line is that remains in the 1986 version compared to the 1958 version. I'm not sure what prize I'll give, but please let me know in the comments if you know what the one line was. This is a beautiful little film. It's probably Cronenberg's most romantic, which sounds crazy, apart from maybe M. Butterfly. Um, Again, people have read it as a meditation on AIDS or disease. But to be honest, I think it's more about just growing old. It's one of those great films, again, about signs gone wrong and the consequences of it. But it is, despite the title, a very human story. Um, I think if we're in a relationship or married or have a significant other, you kind of do identify with what Gina Davis goes through. Um, And again, it's a really good ending. Um, Yeah, I mean, everybody should probably have seen this. Everybody knows probably the story of it. But it is worth revisiting if you haven't seen it for a while. And it's a really good film. Number three is Videodrome. Now this is the Arrow Blu-ray. I have this on Criterion DVD, which is a lovely box because it looks like a videotape. You may have seen that in my Criterion Collection DVD video. Um, I think I will actually do a combined Criterion video and uh, DVD and Blu-ray video. Um, This is Videodrome. It has a ton of extras which there is another Blu-ray release which I did have which doesn't have any extras so I would recommend the Arrow yeah this is a an amazing little film again you could argue the ending but allegedly they just they kind of were running out of money and time and just had to come up with an ending in short a short time Um, but it's a fantastic ending that works Again, this is about technology, it's about the future, it's about pushing the boundaries, it's about never being satisfied, always looking for the next extreme, which I suppose as cinephiles we're sometimes guilty of. Um, Again, a lot of Cronenberg stuff, the technology might look as though it's aged, but it was actually ahead of his time. It predicted a lot of things. The obsession with television, the obsession with um, sex and violence on television. It is quite a prescient film, and it's still relevant today. Again, James Woods gives uh, one of these usual obsessively fantastic performances. Debbie Harry is okay in it. Um, She is a little bit in a trance, in a daze, but then that's kind of her character. And again, it has amazing special effects for their time. Um, And it is still a challenging, disturbing little film, which makes you think, which is essentially what all Cronenberg films do. Cronenberg films generally make you think and they might make you think about things you don't want to think about 
but again that's what an artist is supposed to do it's not supposed to just go in one ear and out the other it's supposed to stick with you and that's what Videodrome does now again by the process of elimination people might be thinking what's left well number two is the dead zone and again the exception of the fly this might be Cronenberg's most mainstream film and I may be a little bit biased because I'm a huge Christopher Walken fan uh, top 10 coming soon with Christopher Walken um, and there's not too many films where he is actually the leading actor there's too many films where he just gets a 15 minute bit part this is one of the better Stephen King adaptations about a guy who has essentially the gift in inverted commas of second sight he can kind of predict what's going to happen in the future and which obviously becomes a curse because that's it's Stephen King um, and again it's a fantastic performance Christopher Walken uh, Martin Sheen actually plays a villain which I'm not sure he's played too many of them Tom Skerritt's in it as well um, and I can't remember the female Brooke Adams, sorry I apologise Brooke Adams fans um, it's just a great wee film again it might be a little bit high on my list just because I'm biased towards Christopher Walken but if you haven't seen it The Dead Zone is a great wee chiller which by the process of elimination for anybody who's paying attention out there as I knock my microphone over from the shock of, and knock my Blu-rays over from the shock of what the number one David Cronenberg film is and it's Dead Ringers I'm sure you all guessed that this is the Scream Factory version which is beautiful So this is a two disc Scream Factory version and this has on the first disc it has the 1.78 to 1 version and the second disc has the 1 to 6 1.66 to 1 ratio version which is the one that Cronenberg prefers. Um, the first disc has an audio commentary by William Beard who has written a book on Cronenberg, The Artist as Monster. And it has a really interesting commentary by Jeremy Irons, who plays the Mantle Twins, gynecologist. Yeah, this is also my favourite gynecological film. There won't be a top ten gynecological films, um, but this is definitely number one. And the second disc has interviews with actor Stephen Lack and Heidi von Polesk and the DP Peter Shuzinski and the special effects artist Gordon Smith so it's a beautiful set and it's a beautiful film even though it's sad and depressing and challenging it is just beautiful the colours the way they shot two Jeremy Irons you don't even notice really that there's two Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons' performance is just stunning because you can tell both twins apart. Um, when Jeremy Irons won the Oscar in 1991, I believe, for Reversal of Fortune, he thanked David Cronenberg because he pretty much said that he should have got the Oscar for this um, and this led him to get the Oscar for Reversal of Fortune. But this is a way better performance and controversially a way better film. It's about two twin gynaecologists who share everything, including women, and the inevitable consequences of that. It was loosely based on a true story. Loosely, I think. And again, it's just one of those films that sticks with you for a long time it's everything that's brilliant about Cronenberg it's intelligent it's disturbing it makes you think 
and you won't forget it in a hurry. And that is number one, and that is Dead Ringers. I do recommend this um, Scream Factory version, or Shout Factory, I apologise. Um, there is a Region B version coming out very shortly on Blu-ray, because again, for years, this was just on DVD. But hopefully more people will be exposed to this and actually watch it, because it is a truly great film. Um, one of the best films in the 80s. So, thank you very much for watching. I apologise for knocking my microphone over and throwing all my Blu-rays in there. Um, if you liked this video, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel, even if you wish. And leave a comment if you disagree with my entire top 10, which wouldn't be a surprise. And we'll see you again. So this is the Solitary Ronin saying goodnight.